In this video, we're going to take a look at long division and then later how it links to the remainder theorem in another video. So to start with long division, uh, let's say that we take a look at 437 divided by 13. So if you recall, we draw 13 to the left of the long division symbol and we place the number 437 inside. So 13 is called our divisor. And the 437 is called the dividend. So we first take a look and think about how many times does 13 go into 43. And we find that is 3 times. And then we're going to go 3 times 13 will give us 39, which we place underneath the first two numbers. We draw a line and we subtract. So when we subtract, we get 4. Bring down the next number, which is a 7. And then we ask ourselves again, how many times does 13 go into 47? So again, it is 3. So we write 3 above the 7, because that's where it ended. We take 3 times 13, that gives us 39 again. And we subtract, and 47 minus 39 is 8. And if you recall, this is our remainder. And the 33 is called the quotient. So if I want to check to see if I've done this correctly, what I can do is take my quotient, multiply it by my divisor, and add the remainder. So I'm actually going to go 13, so my divisor, times my quotient. doesn't matter which order you multiply them in. And then add my remainder. So 13 times 33, we can take out a calculator. We calculate that to be 429 plus 8, and that gives us 437, which is the dividend that we started off with, which is what we want. So that's correct quotient and remainder. So what we're going to do next is take a look at, well, what happens when it's not just simple numbers, but we actually have polynomials divided by other polynomials. We actually use the same process. So I have this polynomial with the leading term as 4x cubed divided by x minus 3. So what we're going to do is, same as before, we put our divisor on the left to the right of our division symbol. And we're going to place our polynomial inside. So again, the x minus 3 is our divisor. The polynomial inside is our dividend. Okay. Now the process is a little bit slightly different. When I do the long division, I'm really only taking a look at the first term in the divisor and also the first term in the dividend. So if I take a look at 4x cubed and I divide it by x, I notice that is 4x squared. Now if you look in my dividend here, the squares are located above the second term. So 4x cubed divided by x is 4x squared. So I'm going to place that above the 3x squared because that's where their squares are located. And then same as before, I want to take this quotient part and multiply it by the divisor. So 4x squared times x gives me 4x cubed. And then I have 4x squared, I do multiply it by the negative 3, and that gives me negative 12x squared. So what we want to do, we draw our line, and we're going to subtract. So the point of this first step here is always to get rid of that first term. So when I subtract, notice that becomes 0. 3x squared minus negative 12x squared, that gives me 15x squared. So that still does give me a term to start. I want to bring down the next term, which is minus 7x. And then I'm going to start again. So I want to figure out how many times does x, our first term in the divisor, go into only the 15x squared. So only the 15x squared here, which is the result of subtraction. So 15x squared divided by x gives me 15x. 
So I'm going to put plus 15x, which goes above the 7x, because that's where the x's are located, the x terms. We multiply, so we have 15x times our divisor, x minus 3, and I'm going to get 15x squared minus 45x. So again, we draw the line, and we're going to subtract. Notice the 15x squared minus 15x squared becomes 0. That's what you're trying to do. Get rid of that first term. Negative 7x minus negative 45x gives me 38x. Bring down my next and very last term, which is 16. And we're going to do the process again. So you want to take the first term that's left over in my dividend, the 38x, and then divide it by the first term in the divisor. So 38x divided by x is 38. So we're going to put that last number above where the 16 is because that's where the single whole constants are. And we're going to multiply. So 38 times my entire divisor of x minus 3 gives me 38x minus 114. We're going to subtract again and 16 sorry, 38x minus 30x gives us a 0, so the notice the first term is gone again. And then we have 16 minus negative 114, which gives me 130. So the 130 now is our remainder. And this quotient is the part that's on the top of the division line. Okay. So those, uh, we're going to verify our answers in a bit. Um, it also says state any restrictions on the variable. So the restrictions is based on, because we're dividing by x minus 3, we know that when we divide, we can't divide by 0. So x minus 3 can't equal 0, so x cannot equal 3. So that would be a restriction on the variable. So to check our answer, what I'm going to do is I want to take our divisor, multiply it by the quotient, add the remainder to make sure that it equals our dividend. So to do my check, I'm going to have x minus 3 times 4x squared plus 15x plus 38 and then plus 30. So I'm going to distribute here. So x times the whole entire polynomial gives me 4x cubed plus 15x squared plus 38x. Now I'm going to take negative 3 and multiply it by the polynomial. So that gives me negative 12x squared minus 45x minus 114 plus 130. And lastly, let's just simplify. Combining our like terms, we get 4x cubed. And then 15 minus 12 is 3x squared. 38 minus 45 gives me negative 7x. And then negative 114 plus 130 is 16. So this is a way to nicely check to see if we have the original, if we did, did the long division correctly. And you can see that my check gives me the same result as my original dividend. So we know that we've done the long division correctly. All right, so the result, we can write our answers um, in this form here, um, where x minus a is a binomial and a is an integer. So we can write our polynomial divided by the divisor is equal to q of x plus r over x minus a. So the x minus a is the divisor and Q of x is our quotient, and r is the remainder. So what I could do is take my answer here and go back, and I'm going to then rewrite this. Um, so if I divided that, just because I don't have the space, I'm going to put P of x divided by x minus 3 is equal to 4x squared plus 15x plus 38. That's my quotient. 
plus the remainder, which is 130, divided by my divisor, x minus 3. So this gives me a way to write my answer. All right, let's take a look at one more example so we can see how division, long division works. So in this example, um, we have, you'll notice that the exponents goes 4, 3, but notice that there's a 2 missing. So what we're going to do um, when we do this question here, we're going to set this up as x plus 4 on the outside of our long division symbol to the left. And we have 3x to the power of 4 plus 12x cubed plus 0x squared because there's no x squared. So remember to place that in this, our extra term. Minus 4x plus 5. All right, so let's try this again. So we're going to take our first term again, which is 3x to the 4, and we divide it by x. So that gives us 3x cubed. So notice that the cube is over here as a second term. So we're going to place it above. So we get 3x cubed. We're going to multiply. So we have 3x cubed times our divisor, which is x plus 4. We get 3x to the power of 4 plus 12x cubed. We subtract. Now notice actually this time when we subtract, it actually everything becomes 0. So when I bring down the next term, it doesn't really matter because this is also 0. So we're going to have to bring down the next two terms because we have our dividing by a binomial. So if I only bring down negative 4x, that's not enough because when I subtract later, I'm going to have a binomial after I multiply. So I'm going to bring down my 5 as well. Okay, so again, we have these zeros which we don't, we can ignore. So I'm going to take the first term, which is negative 4x, divided by my first term here, which is x, and that gives me negative 4. So since this is negative 4, just to kind of make it nice, I am going to place it above the 5, which kind of knows, it kind of shows you that this is done now because it's actually at the end of my polynomial. So I have negative 4 times the x plus 4. So I get negative 4x. And negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. So I subtract. Notice this first term becomes 0. And I get 5 minus negative 16. And that's going to be 21. So let's do um, our restriction. So we can see that from here, we have x plus 4 can't equal 0. And you can write this as x cannot equal negative 4. I can rewrite my answer as, actually, before I write the answer, we should probably do a check first just to make sure this is even correct. So what I'll do is I'll do a check down here on the bottom. So I'm going to check. I'm going to take my divisor, x plus 4, and multiply it by 3x cubed minus 4, and add my remainder. So that should give me my original. So when I multiply this out, I get 3x to the power of 4 minus 4x plus 12x cubed minus 16 and plus 21. So this gives me 3x4 plus 12x cubed minus 4x and plus 5 after I simplify. So I checked and this is actually the same as my original dividend. Sorry, my original dividend. So I'm now going to rewrite my answer. And just to take the shortcut, I'll go p of x divided by the divisor x plus 4. And get that gives me my dividend, or sorry, my quotient, which is 3x cubed minus 4. But I still have a remainder. So I have a remainder of 21 divided by x plus 4. And that gives me my answer written out.